Hello and welcome to this video from the MicroRooster. Today's topic is setting up your workstation and library. This is uh, for MicroStrategy Window MicroStrategy version 2019 or version 11. Um, before you start using this version or installing this version, I recommend you uninstall the older version and then install the MicroStrategy 11 or 2019 version so that you can get your workstation library set up properly. Realize there's a few problems and a few issues with trying to upgrade from 10 to 11. Now these two uh, systems, the workstation library, are new for uh, our environment. They're mostly admin and developer, but they also have the workstation capability for users. And they utilize the idea of using the libraries, but you have to install them. So make sure you install the you, when you're installing, you have checked the library and the web universal JavaScript um, because the library is going to be using the Tomcat, which is a Java server. Uh, it's different than your web server. It's going to be another server running side by side. So you have to make sure also that the Tomcat is being selected as an option in your installation. Usually it is a default uh, installation. Once you select the appropriate library, you could also choose collaboration, which would be another server running to allow for collaboration on a different port. And if you, all your components are there or installed, or you can add them if you need to. And once you select them, all of them should be pulling in through the Tomcat. The Tomcat will be set up automatically for you using the MicroStrategy 11 installation um, so you don't need to worry about it however I noticed that when I tried to upgrade it didn't automatically pick up the uh, uh, Tomcat version so that I needed so you have to make sure just that you're up instead of upgrading you're reinstalling your server it doesn't mean you're gonna overwrite your metadata it just means you're gonna be updating your uh, software so once I got you got that down uh, and your installation is in place, then you can move to the next pace, uh, next step, which is um, first making sure that your Tomcat server, after installation restarting your server, is actually up and running from your services. So that's a simple check. If it's not there, this is not going to work. So make sure you get that step down. Once you're there, you can go to your server 8080 port and the MicroStrategy library will to authenticate so just go to your server 8080 slash microstrategy library and you will see all the items that are shared in your library in this case I have an environment with two items that were shared or saved to my library so I will see them right here one is a dossier and one is a dashboard or a document and I can see some properties which allows me to do a few quick operations besides running it there's some sharing, downloading, uh, refreshing, etc. So there are a few options here. Um, the library is meant to be as a sharing uh, area or area for uh, sending information to different people. Instead of having people go to your folder to find something, you just would push it to their library. And when you run things from the library, you have some few basic capabilities to actually view the report or dashboard from within the library itself. So the library is also useful for viewing and running your reports or dossiers. Um, so it serves multiple purposes. It's a sharing hub and a place to run different items. You, The library, because it's a Tomcat, it also has an admin portal. So you can log into the admin. If you don't know your admin credentials when you install it, just go to the Microsoft Tomcat Apache Conf folder you will find a Tomcat users file in it you will find a few logins one of them is the MSTR uh, login with the web uh, admin uh, uh, access and it'll have your password this is my default password before I changed it so I'm just gonna pick up whatever default came with the installation uh, you could change it later on to make yours secure so this was my default after this demo I changed it so but it comes out of the box and once I access the environment I will see in the overview all my servers I have three servers web servers running a library server intelligence server and a collaboration server 
My library server is connecting also through the standard and it has a few security settings. Uh, if you need to use uh, HyperCards for on-premise, you're gonna have to set this to all. The intelligent server is just your port 34 952, the default uh, port for the intelligent server or your web server. And then if you can have a collaboration server sitting on another port, which allows you to uh, share your information from one environment to another. So again, the ports are different for each one of these servers, as you noticed. And the, um, the, in the overview, you see how they interact with each other. So you have the library reading from intelligent and collaboration going back and forth between different libraries. Uh, just to sync up different libraries as they, you go. Uh, most of the workstation uh, skills that you need is just how to go between creating items and sharing them in the library. Um, if you have not installed the workstation, just go to the community products and download your to the appropriate environment your workstation. Um, installing it and setting it up is pretty straightforward from that point on. If you install Workstation before you install MicroStrategy 11, you might have to do some refresh or restart of your server just to have them connect. However, once you're in, your first thing you need to do is create a new environment. The environment URL is your library URL. Give it whatever name you want. Just make sure you're using the right library URL, which is your HTTP and your server name. In my case, it's a local host slash MicroStrategy library. All right. so that is your library URL, okay? You can create as many environments as you want in the same library URL, okay? So it's not one-to-one, -one, it's many-to-one. And it, whatever authentication we set up in the admin uh, is the same one that we pick here, but we only had one. Now, in my case, I already had this environment set up, so I'm just gonna disconnect and reconnect to that environment. And I'm gonna use now my MicroStrategy credentials because now I wanna connect to my environment through the library back into the intelligent server okay so, so it might be a little confusing at the first time but then you'll get a hold of it and it'll be straightforward now my library what we saw in in the web is what i see here in the workstation again this is just an interface applications are my projects i one new thing about this workstation allows you to spin out new projects okay why well, because you might want to create reports or dashboards or data sets and you want to share them with a small group of people and you want to give them different uh, abilities, like you want to give them full control, but you don't want to give them full control to your main metadata. So what you would do, you could spin off different applications or projects and give them diff give users different access to them. Why are they doing this? Because they're trying to make it easy to spin off uh, environments of your main metadata and give user different user groups different uh, accesses. It, this can be done by the admin using the projects. So you can have as many projects, but this is way faster and much simpler. You simply add an application, give it a name, um, and you choose the environment. You can have, I have one environment set up, but you can control multiple environments. So that's another key thing. You can spin off application from as many app environments you want so think about it as they're consolidating a multi uh, project source uh, environment into one interface that allows you control many okay so it's not only is it you're spinning out but you're spinning out from different environments and if you look at the properties of this application it'll give you some generic uh, information and you can research the activity uh, you can see who's running, how much, and what kind of information they're running, okay? So there's all these properties that you can look into, which gives you better analytics about your new project. Your new project, once you spin it out, is going to be empty. So even though it has the same structure, it's empty. So you start creating your stuff right here and then using this environment. And then given setting up the different uh, security and... Um, accesses to the different environment that you have so each environment can have its own set of security or levels of access for users again you can create dossiers just like you did with the desktop i'm not going to go into this but you can go and watch our video about how to create dossiers which is the modern version of visual insights straightforward same interface not much new here a few changes but not too many 
differences. Okay, so we don't need to do that. I have a few that I created one. There's new concept of certifying, decertifying. This is the ability to give uh, flag things that are ready for consumption by users so that users can understand that this is a production, for example, ready. And a decertified one is maybe a, something that's under development or un, not tested yet. So the admin has the ability. Whoever has right access can also, if you give somebody right access, they can certify, decertify. It's just a user privilege called certify. So um, when you give access to an environment, you can control if a user has the ability to certify, decertify items. Typically your architects, maybe your power users. You could share your dossiers through a link or send them to somebody's libraries. And again, you can manage the security access per user or per group. So if you have users or groups that will show up in your security access, you can give them different types of control, like we said, but you also can have exclude or uh, remove, for example, write an execution or delete, etc. So you, have limit, you have, so you have control over it, and then you have types of control. Uh, there's a few maybe advanced settings, and then back to the activities, you can see who's running it, when they're running it, and how they're using it. So again, more analytics available to the owner of the app or the uh, dossier in this case. And you can change some cosmetic things, like maybe the logo, just choose something from a URL or <clears throat> from any location that you have available. So I'm just going to choose one of the out of the box. And once I'm done, you know, I can get out of this. Oh yeah, one more thing. They sh it, this is useful. It shows you all the items that also share the same data sets with this dossier. So you have now connection. Also, there's a ability to run documents and do some a few other things with the documents like certify them and share them rename them maybe these are your typical built in the developer kind of da dashboards or documents okay so you can view them and run them from here there's the concept of cards hyper cards we're going to have a special video just for this because it's a different topic but it uses the workstation you can also uh access your reports anytime you run a report it'll pull it up into a dossier automatically so anytime you run a report in the workstation it'll run as a dossier so you might as well just create a new dossier from your report if you were going to use it and then you can control the access to it who has what access and what can they do all right so these are your reports you cannot create reports here but you can only use them you can create dossiers you can create however data sets data sets are two types your cubes and your imports so you have your different file connections you can refresh them or you can edit them etc this will take you to the extraction and uh, load layer which you're familiar with if you have used dossiers or visual insights it's your in-memory cube creation wizard um, and it also shows you the OLAP cubes that you have created maybe in the developer. You can certify, decertify these different things. You can create dossiers right off of them also. So you have a lot of flexibility here. And again, same thing with properties, security. One more thing you might be able to play with is your advanced settings because now you have more things to worry about when creating these different cubes. So besides security the advanced settings lets you if you view all properties you should be able to play a lot more with the VLDP properties um, than for example for a report this is now kind of bridging the gap between what what's available for a data set or a cube in the uh, workstation and what you have in the developer so there's a few things that you can modify for the VLDP settings to make your results uh, more fitting to your environment or more efficient again you probably need to be an architect to mess with that and uh, let's see you can decertify certify if you have certificate application again this means that your user can trust this environment before they create their new dossier off of it or use it anything you create in the workstation because it's connected will be also connecting back to your development environment so anything you do here can be uh, connected you also have the ability to do some simple refreshes and manual and scheduled refreshes again everything you do here 
you can't control from the developer. So all of them are talking to each other. In our topology, if we have multiple environments, we would have a topology. We don't have multiple environments, but feel free to add more environments to your um, to more nodes to your environment and create a topology. There's two things that we did not do. We, I did not install the certificates or the licenses, which is two different components in the MicroStrategy 2019. If you did, you can have your certificates and license appear here. The license is not your typical license that you're thinking of. It's the perform platform analytics on top of the license, which shows you how licenses are being utilized. If you install the platform analytics, then you can access the licenses uh, analytics right here so it shows you who's you how how are your licenses being used your users and user groups we saw them being defined per dossier or per data set but you also have the ability to control uh, users and user groups right here the best thing about this that I like besides the typical you know ability to change you know uh, assign groups and all the different uh, things that you're familiar with is that you can give to each environment uh, a set of um, uh, types of access so they have a new list sort of pre-configured the most popular ones are probably going to be your analyst analyst architect and the administrator or application architect meaning that people who can have either read only write only modify or to delete okay so but there's a bunch of other ones uh, listed here that you can read through, such as certify or uncertify that we talked about. Obviously, some of them overwrite the rest, like if you're a system admin, you have all the privileges, etc. You don't need to specify each and every one of them. And then you have a description per user, or you can delete the user altogether. Okay, Deactivation as well. What, one of the unique things about this is that you can control multiple environments. So if you're an admin, you have multiple environments. You can control users from one place instead of logging into each environment separately. So that's pretty unique as well. Um, that you can have multiple project sources if you're in a if you're in a big uh, company that has multiple microstrategy projects running around. You now can just access them all from one interface. So that will make your life easier. Once you're done, and we refresh our uh, main page, our uh, applications that we created should pop up such as our new project project app because this is now a new project and it, you're going to use the same credentials we have because it's passing on our credentials and our security to the new environment because we owned it or we could have given access to more people one new link we'll see is the MicroStrategy library link this will show us from the web it'll take us to the 8080 portfolio and uh, URL and it'll show us the different apps. I'm just going to delete one of these apps and share it back so that we can see how this happens. I'm going to go back to the workstation to do this. I'm going to go to this dossier and I'm going to add it to my library by viewing it first in the library. So I'm going to view it from the workstation, send it to the library. Now it's running in the library, but it's not saved to my library until I add it to the library. Once I add it to my library, it's part of my library now. I can also share it with other users through sending them an invite, you send them a link, send them an email, exporting to a PDF. I just want to mail it as a PDF or I want to download it as a dossier. Other people can open it in their desktop environment or in their workstation environment. There's a lot going on. This is pretty busy. I'm not sure uh, how well integrated these things are with the developer and the desktop. It seems like there's going to be a lot of small tools doing a lot of similar stuff. So there's going to be a lot of overlap there. I expect a lot of confusion around these tools. I'm not sure what MicroStrategy's plans for the future are, how to bring this all together and eliminate redundancy. But this is useful. There's a lot of redundancies, so hopefully you learned something new. Thank you.